We will start today's service with a proclamation. Please silence your cell phone and prepare your heart and let us focus on God during the next hour. Psalm 118, verse 14 through 17. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Next, we invite you to stand up for the worship part as we prepare our hearts for praise and worship through YouTube. Good morning, brothers and sisters. So happy that we can gather here online to worship God and listen to his, what he's going to say to you today. Before we start, let's stretch around. Let's stand and stretch and be ready with our hearts to praise him. God is our living hope. He's still alive. Last Friday, last weekend, he's, he, he, we just celebrate his resurrection. Today, we're going to sing how God is our living hope. Okay, let's worship.
You may be seated. We'd like to welcome everyone joining us. If this is your first time joining EFC Irvine uh, English Sermon, and um, these are the websites of our church website, 1.5 Generation website, and uh, the EM website. We hope that you can visit our websites. And also, if you haven't uh, joined uh, our Facebook, we also invite you to like the Facebook page, uh, join our Facebook group, and we also have a, a COVID support group on Facebook. We invite everyone uh, to also join that. And um, next we will have, um, if this is your first time, we also would like to uh, invite you to fill your information, and you can just use your uh, phone to scan the QR code, and uh, don't worry, we are not going to bother you. We won't uh, send you spam email or anything. We just want to see if we can help you to find a suitable small group for you to join in the future. And um, next we'll have our announcements. And for announcements, so first breaking news, uh, you are recommended to wear a mask at home. This is to prevent you from binge eating. Um, no, of course, just kidding. All right, so for real announcements, we, we are actually going to stay uh, for online worship, online Sunday worship, and also online a uh, small group at least throughout the month of May. So please don't come to church. Also, we invite you to join our 40 days of prayer. And we have a prayer chain that we hope you can sign up and you can just scan your uh, QR code, uh, scan the QR code with your phone and you can sign up. You don't have to fast if you don't want to. If you personally need prayer, then uh, you can talk to Pastor Casey, talk to me. Or you can also email your prayer request to our 1.5 Generation prayer team, and our, intercess in our intercessor will be praying for you. Most of you already know that we have donated 10,000 masks to the hospital, and uh, this is uh, a thank you clip from one of the video. Uh, please watch this. Thank you so much to EFC Irvine for this very generous donation. I'll help all three hospitals that emanate help. Queen of the Valley in West Covina, Intercommunity in Covina, and Foothill Presbyterian, Presbyterian in Glendora. And I'll help protect our frontline healthcare workers in particular, especially during this time of crisis. Thank you again so much, and God bless. All right, now we are going to continue this project to donate the mask and also protective gowns, PPEs, to, to the hospitals. So, but the, uh, the, 
the continuation of the project will not be under EFCI's name, will more, more of a, a private donation. Um, you will be receiving email uh, asking you to, to also be part of it. If you have a question, this is my email, uh, my phone number, and you're welcome to contact me. If you want to receive tax donation, it will not be under church, but an organization um, has um, just been willing to give tax donations. So if you want to get tax donation, then you can write check to AIT mission and send a memo mask and send that to church. Um, then you will get a tax donation receipt. Otherwise, you can see my Facebook for other donation methods. All right, the, we, most, of, most of us know, and you have, if you have been here, you know that throughout the past years, we, our church has been involved in uh, World Vision 6K for Water. And this year, we will still do it. Uh, it's on May 16th, Saturday, but we'll do it with uh, uh, a, a different, different way of doing it. So please watch the following video. Uh, Casey will give you the instruction. Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters at EFCI. How are you doing this wonderful Sunday morning? This is Pastor Casey Liu. And as you can see, I'm, I am in my Team World Vision outfit. For the past three years, our church has been involved in uh, raising money um, and running for Team World Vision 6K uh, for the clean water crisis. And so this year, due to the pandemic, I was a bit worried about, hey, is, is it still gonna go on? But then uh, World Vision Headquarters have decided that, yes, it will still go on, um, but not in its usual format. We won't be gathering in a park, but we're gonna be doing this virtually. So it's going to be a virtual event. So what that means is that we do this solo. We either go walk or run by ourselves, or we do it with our own family uh, on a trail or just in your neighborhood. And so we don't join with anyone else. Uh, we just do it um, with our own family, okay? So in the midst of the pandemic, maybe some of us are wondering, why are we still uh, doing the 6K? Why? Don't we have enough things to worry about? Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I feel that way too. But I do believe that we still need vision for our lives, vision and purpose, even uh, during the quarantine. So we want to go back to Matthew 25, when our Lord Jesus said, when you give water to the least of these, to those who are thirsty, you have done it unto me. And by providing clean water, we do it in the name of Jesus. We provide physical clean water and we also offer the hope of the living water. So those who get the water may also hear the gospel as well. So for some of the logistics, we're going to be meeting up on Saturday, May 16th. And we're going to meet up on Zoom at 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay, we're going to meet up together. We're going to greet each other. We're going to have a word of encouragement from the pastors. And we're going to be stretching and warming up together. And so that'll take about 30 minutes, okay? And we're also going to be announcing the first place prizes in each age category. And this year, our theme is going to be Avengers. So you can wear something uh, that has Avengers in it. For example, I made a little uh, Avengers mask where there's like the Hulk and Iron Man and Thor. And if I wear this mask, okay, I'm doing the Avengers theme, okay? So um, we're gonna have six different age categories. So we're encouraging the young, the old, and any age in between to participate with us. Um, Online, if you go to the registration page, you will also see uh, the 10 safety guidelines that I give uh, for, for the 6K event. Okay, so be sure to abide by the safety guidelines so that we can have fun without any worries. Okay, I'll see you there. Next, we will continue our worship with offering. And offering is a duty for Christian and Christian only. So if you're not a Christian or this is your first time, you're just visiting us, uh, please don't feel obligated to give. Just pray with us with a heart of thanksgiving. And um, if you are an EFCI regular or if you, um, you, you are willing to make donation to our church, you can use the QR code or one of the link. It goes to the same account and you can give online. Or if you want to write physical check, then please write physical check and mail to, to church. 
and um, we will still have people picking up um, uh, checks. Let's do an uh, offering prayer and uh, prepare our hearts for Thanksgiving. Father, we come before you. We are still thankful for everything you have done. And Father, we pray that you provide the need, provision for those families who are in need. And Father, we also want to pray for every family. May you protect us, provide us. And Father, we also give what we want to show our appreciation to you. May you use it for your kingdom. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So this year we were going to use the Gospel of John to, for our Sunday sermon. But of course now the pandemic has altered the course. But today I will still use the Gospel of John chapter 4. I have water and I have food. Um, this is Jesus' conversation with woman at the well. If you have already uh, listened to this, sermon, uh, to this passage with Pastor Casey, I'm going to approach this with a different perspective as we deal, deal with pandemics. And in this, in this passage, Jesus said, I have water and I have food. And this actually has kind of a different meaning in time of pandemic. If you know Taiwanese, Taiwanese, one of the way of greeting is by saying, meaning, did you eat? Now, when people ask this, it's not really asking about, did you eat or have you eaten? It's a way of saying, how are you? Because in the old times, people are relatively poor and they don't have things to eat. So when you ask people, did you eat? Meaning, it's, it's like, hey, you know, do you have stuff to eat? Meaning, how are you? Now, of course, nowadays we don't, most of us, you know, we're not worrying about food. But I think one good thing about this pandemic is actually reminds us to give thanks, to appreciate. Because when Jesus said, I have water, I have food, it reminds us that if I have water, I have food, I have egg, I have rice, I have milk, this is something to give thanks. And nowadays when Sharon and I, when we say grace for our meal, we, we have a different, different feeling because it really makes us to appreciate what we have in a more genuine way. In this passage today, Jesus talked about have food and have water. And let's talk about what does that remind us today. Let's turn to uh, John chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 3. So Jesus left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Just kind of like me. I'm sitting here. I'm kind of tired, literally, as it's noon. Uh, verse 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give a drink? Will, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. So in this short passage, the word Samaria or Samaritan has been repeated six times already, meaning the Bible wants us to realize, to recognize that the location of Samaria has some significance in this story. The place Samaria it's the, the northern kingdom, where the northern kingdom used to be. So the northern kingdom, Israel, that their descendants is the Samaritans. When the northern kingdom was conquered by Assyria, the Assyrians intentionally forced interracial marriage so that their race, their bloodline is not pure. When the bloodline is not pure, meaning their culture is not pure, that means their faith is not pure. So... So Judah, Judean, they see Samaritans as mixed blood, as, as impure bloodline, meaning they see Samaritans as lower class or even unclean religiously. So most Jews, they either live up there in Galilee or they live down there in the land of Judea or Jerusalem. 
And traditionally, when they try to go up and, up and down, they will avoid the middle region of Samaria. They will go around it, they will take a small detour, as you can see in the map. So when verse 3 and 4 said Jesus left Judea and went back to Galilee, he had to go to Samaria. This is an interesting thing when the Bible said he had to, because he didn't have to. He could have done it avoiding, take a small detour, avoiding Samaria like everyone else. Because in verse 9, it was clear, says Jews do not associate with Samaritans. So we see that Jesus actually intentionally went past through Samaria, through the, the town of Sychar. He didn't have to, but he chose to. So this is the first point I want to share in this pandemic we need to walk the extra mile intentionally. Verse 3 and verse 4, we just read, did Jesus have to go to Samaria? No, he didn't have to. He didn't have to, but, but the Bible said he had to. Maybe from a certain perspective, he had to do this because it is his mission to reach out to the people in Samaria. Maybe he had to because no other people want to do it at that time. So when the Bible says he had to, it's not because geographically it's on his way. He could, have easy, he could have easily avoided that. But he had to because it's his mission. It is his purpose. There are many things that we can do in this pandemic that originally you didn't have to do it. In other times, maybe you don't do it. But now, maybe you have to. For example, pray for strangers. Since the pandemic has started, I have already five times when I go into a store or pick up food, I, I, I talk to, to the person, I say, can I pray for you? No one has rejected me so far. This past Monday when we, um, Shen and I went to West Covina to drop off mass and we actually went to Roland High and then we went to Simbala and we, we, we enjoy it. It's like, it's like our dating activity now. Uh, I asked the, the owner, can I pray for you? And she said, I, I'm not a believer, but sure. You know, before when I went to Simbala, when I went to Chinese restaurant, Chinese restaurant there's no way we can, we can say, hey, you know, pray for you. But now we can. A couple of weeks ago, we went to GNC, I went to GNC store and I prayed for the owner. And she's with Middle Eastern background. And after my prayer, she actually had tears in her eyes. Before, these people... Normally, you don't associate with them. But now, you can walk that extra mile and pray for them. In pandemic, this is the time that we're called to care for people that you normally don't have interaction with. And there's a movie that came out recently, The Two Popes. It's a great movie. And we're going to watch a short clip by Pope Francis. And this is one of the uh, the, the speech done by Pope Francis. Let's watch this. We are seeing the globalization of indifference. There is a culture of comfort which makes us think only of ourselves, makes us live in soap bubbles, which, however lovely, are also insubstantial. We've become used to the suffering of others. It doesn't affect me. No one in our world feels responsible. Who is responsible for the blood of our brothers and sisters? The refugees washed up on the shores of the Mediterranean? I don't have anything to do with it. Must be someone else. Certainly not me. When no one is to blame, everyone is to blame. So when Pope Francis said, many of us say, I don't have anything to do with it. It must be someone else, not me. I think that challenges all of us. And he ends his speech with, when no one is to blame, everyone is to blame. I think tying to 
what we have been talking about today. Today, we also have many Samaritans around us. Maybe no longer is talking about Muslims or, or, or Middle Eastern um, origin refugees. But the Samaritans may be your neighbor, maybe your gardeners, maybe your mailman, maybe your Amazon delivery men. Are we caring for them? Can you pray for him or her? Can you maybe give some gifts that they need? Maybe it's people that you usually don't talk to or don't feel associated with, strangers. But maybe this is the time that we need to care for them. Who are your Samaritans in life? Ever since this virus started in Wuhan, I have been doing donations, masks, money to the hospital and church to Wuhan with a few other brothers and sisters. And I, and I could feel, and somehow even heard, you know, people said, this has nothing to do with me. Wuhan, in many ways, was our Samaritan. Many people feel like that has nothing to do with me. Now, I believe when what's happening right here in, in the U.S., now we see the need of medical staff and their lack of PPEs. Now, I think it's, it's very obvious this, this has to do with both you and me. And last week, April, uh, April 8th, when I was dealing with mass donation to one of the hospital in New York, this is the email I got, and I posted on my Facebook that the email I received, it says just among the three hospitals in their system alone had 3,300 COVID-positive patients. And that was already April 7th, and now it must be worse. And I actually, I, I cried that night as Sharon and I were praying for my safety just because I had to deliver masks, donation masks to, to the hospital entrance or receiving dock. And, and if hospitals in, in Southern California has 100 or 200 tested positive patients, we're like, wow, that's a lot, that's dangerous. I can't imagine being the doctors, nurses, or the, their family members who have to work at a hospital that has thousands of COVID patients. I can't imagine the anxiety or emotional stress that all of them have been going through. And this is one of the, one of the picture that my friends sent me from, from New York. I don't know if you know why there are so many sandwich bags in this hospital. Sadly, it's because it's for their PPEs, for their, their mask, because they have to reuse the next day. So they have to put these in this individual sandwich bag for them to reuse that same mask the next day, because they really don't have enough. Now, I am thankful that church is willing to be part of the first 10,000 that we donated. And I know church has other reasons that they, they cannot continue the, uh, the project after the first 10,000. But I'm also super thankful that church has allowed me to do fundraising, uh, to do personal fundraise. So we're going to continue to donate masks and protective gowns and PPEs. Um, to, to the hospitals. We have another 10,000 plus that's coming in, uh, KN95, and also we have purchased uh, 1,500 uh, 1, protective gowns from Taiwan. And again, we are doing this as personal donations. So if you can, we want to invite you to, to donate and invite, invite you to be part of it. And at least keep us in prayer if, if you can. Um, now, again, Talk to me, here's my contact information. And if you actually need a um, donation receipt, we, uh, an organization called AIT Mission, uh, they agree to do it. So you can write check to AIT Mission, memo mass, and send it to church. Address, send it to church, but payable to title has to be AIT Mission. Now, uh, also if you have um, gloves or, or mask, Surgical masks, if you want to make donation, or even KN95 and 95, and 95, you have it, uh, let me know and I can go to your house, pick it up, and I can uh, deliver to the hospital for you. So the first point is, is I want to remind everyone, in this pandemic, walk that extra mile to help those who are in need. 
It doesn't have to be this project. It can be community service. There are community service that you can do. I already gave Pastor Casey the uh, information. So talk to uh, Pastor Casey, me, or, or any pastoral staff. I already gave them the information. Or talk to, to people around you. Care for your friends. Care for your neighbor. Maybe an, an old lady next door, you know, um, that you can, you can, you can t talk to her. Uh, she just needs someone to talk to. Um, maybe it's people around you who needs financial aid, who needs help with masks or, or hygiene products. Maybe when you go into a store, give more tips and, um, and pray, pray for him or her like I've been talking about. Jesus intentionally walked through Samaria because the Bible says he had to. I believe this week or this month, month there are places that you have to because it's, it is also your mission field. Let's jump to verse 19. This woman, this Samaritan woman, he had conversation with Jesus. And verse 19, at this time he realized, he said, I can see, Jesus, that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the holy place to worship must worship in Jerusalem. Verse 21, Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. So this talks about the location of worship, and this has everything to do what, with this pandemic, what we are doing now. So the second point I want to remind us and talk about is extra space. God is not limited by space or location. So the Samaritan woman asked a very valid question. We Samaritans, we have a holy place. This is a sacred place. The well of Jacob, this is where we worship. This is the Old Testament sacred place. And the, the well of Jacob is next to the place, the place that Moses proclaimed blessings and curse. So verse 19, Jesus, uh, the woman asks, where, where should we worship? Our holy sacred place is here, and yet you Jewish people said it's in Jerusalem. And verse 21, Jesus said, no, it's not here, it's not there. The location is not important. And verse 23, Jesus continued to say, yet the time is coming and has come already when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. And verse 24, God is Spirit and His worshiper must worship in the Spirit and in truth. And actually repeated twice, in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth actually had two different interpretations. The first, more traditional interpretation, it invites us to come with genuine and sincere heart. Now, many Bible scholars, including D.A. Carson, give us the second interpretation. The spirit and in truth, the spirit means the Holy Spirit. The truth is actually talking about the Son, Jesus Christ. As in Gospel of John, John many times when he talks about the truth, he's also referring to the Son, Jesus Christ himself. In verse 8, in chapter 8 of John, verse 32, it says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And later in verse 36, John says, So if the Son sets you free, you are, you are free indeed. So it's clear that the truth is the Son, Jesus Christ. In chapter 14, verse 6, the very famous verse, Jesus actually said very clearly, He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we see that when we talk about inspiring and truth, we can talk about, maybe invites us to come with genuine, sincere heart. So it's not about location, but about our heart. The second interpretation is that it's not about location, but it's about worshiping this triune God, this God of Trinity. Of course, these two interpretations are not mutually exclusive. It's inviting us that it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the location, because location is not important. In fact, from a certain angle, God continued to deconstruct the importance of location. God allows the first holy temple to be destroyed. God allowed Jerusalem to be conquered, to be sacked. In 70 AD, 
the holy, the second holy temple of Jesus' time was also destroyed and was destroyed for good. People can no longer give offering in the holy temple, even till today. The temple no longer exists. And be, even before that, the Church of Jerusalem, the, four, the first and the biggest and the most important church, it has already been scattered under persecution as Stephen was killed. God is not confined by space or location. God deconstructs the importance of location as God is everywhere. God is in every type of space. And internet is also a type of space. Zoom, Facebook, phone call, line, they're all a type of space. Maybe it's not the space that we're used to in experiencing God, in encountering God, but it can still be a spiritual space because God can still be there. A couple of Fridays ago, um, our young professional group had an online seminar. And before that, we still have worship uh, using Zoom. And afterwards, a sister had messaged me, and she's not, she's, she doesn't come to our church, but she joined um, the program that night, and she messaged me. I don't know if you can see it. So she said, I have testimony to share. I feel the worship anointing is so strong, and I got healed that night. And I asked her, heal from what? And she said, a lot of things. And I said, wow, during Friday worship? And she said, yes, I don't know what happened. But as the leader was leading worship, I feel God healing presence. And so it encouraged me, and I hope it encouraged all of you, that God's healing presence, that God's presence, God's work is not confined by space. As, as human, as us, we, we can express our emotion in a very genuine way on the internet. Internet is very real. A lot of people express even more true emotion on the internet. In the same way, God's healing, God's presence can, can be very genuine, can be very real through the internet. And our worship, our thanksgiving toward God can also be very real on the internet. These things are not confined by space. So again, it's our heart that counts. It's the worship that in, in the Son, Jesus Christ, is the worship through the Holy Spirit that we can truly and genuinely worship God. So again, either God invites us to worship Him genuinely, or God invites us to worship in Jesus Christ and in the presence of Holy Spirit. So the second point that I want to invite us in this pandemic extra space. God is not limited by any space or location. There are a few action items I want to talk about. We, we care for people in a genuine way, even those through phone call, even those through messengers, even those through virtual caring. We can still genuinely care for people because God can still work through that. Also, we expect to meet God in small group and on Sunday through the internet. Because God can still manifest. God can still work through the internet space. And finally, let's take Sunday service seriously. I, I don't think anyone, or at least I hope none of you is doing this on Sunday. I hope that you can wear a dress shirt. Maybe you don't wear a dress shirt to Sunday anyway when we, when we met physically. But at least I encourage you not to wear your pajamas. Take a shower before Sunday service. Let's not wake up 10 minutes before it happens and just grab coffee and in your pajamas and just casually, uh, you know, on your sofa. And I hope, also hope you're not watching this on Tuesday, Wednesday uh, night when you're doing your workouts. Let's still take Sunday seriously. Let's wake up, dress up, take a shower, and still take Sunday seriously. And I hope you still take it seriously because this is still a space that you meet God. So in this pandemic, we're reminded that we take Sunday seriously. Sharon and I, we always wake up and prepare ourselves. Extra mile reminds us to walk that extra mile. Extra space 
reminds us that God is not limited by space or location. And the third thing is extra food. What's your water and food? In verse 13 and 14, when Jesus was talking to this woman, Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become spring of water welling up to eternal life. So Jesus talked about this water I give. Now, of course, you know, before um, there's kind of people store water, hoarding water, uh, there's shortage of water. Now, I think most people can get water. But as we read this passage, we're reminded again, our spiritual situation. Maybe we already have, we already hoarded a lot of water bottles at our home, but we are reminded we're being challenged. How about our relationship with people? How about our spiritual situation? How about our relationship with God? Are we drying up inside? Do we have water for that? Are we letting the water Jesus is talking about to become a well, to become a spring that actually springs out and not just quench my own thirst, but for others around me to drink also? We're being challenged and reminded about water situation. Are we drying up inside? Jesus then talked about food in verse 8 as his disciples had gone into the town to buy food. And after they came back in verse 31, they said, teacher, eat something as we brought you food. And Jesus said, I already have food. In verse 34, he said, my food is to do the will of God who sent me and to finish God's work. It's interesting, Jesus, Jesus said, I have food, I have water, because in reality, he didn't have, he didn't have either. He didn't have neither. But maybe he did. It's kind of, kind of a tricky situation. Jesus said, I have water. And this reminds us that we need to restore our connection and relationship with God. Don't let it dry up. Now, this is very easy to understand because Jesus is talking about in a symbolic way. But when Jesus said, I have food, it's not just talking about our food to eat. It's not even just talking about our spiritual food. We all have food now. I think every week I look at my fridge in the beginning of the week, I can't, I can't even reach into and grab the back of the fridge. It's, it's like playing a game. I need to do the right thing for me to get everything back in the fridge. I think now we all have food. Now, symbolically, when we talk about spiritual food, we talk about Bible reading. We talk about Bible app. We talk about doing devotion. But Jesus is not even talking about that. Jesus did not stop there. So Jesus not, did not just stop about reading the word. Jesus is talking about doing the work. Jesus did not stop about knowledge about God or knowledge about Bible. because Those are just in our heads. Those are head knowledge. Jesus is talking about living it out. We do not need more knowledge. We need to live it out. What drives me today? What gives me more energy today? It's not about just doing daily devotion, not just about reading the scripture. It's also about reading. It's, not, it's also about living it out. Are you doing the work of God? Are you doing his will? This is what Jesus is talking about. So the challenge is the next level. It's not just inviting you to, do, to read your daily devotion, to do your daily app. But it's also talking about, are you doing the work of God? Because that's supposed to be your food. And let me close with a testimony also about mask. You know, every, almost every time when I follow God's guidance and do his work, I experience his presence. And I feel recharged and I feel energized. We already donated the 10,000 EFCI mask. Another 5,000 is coming. And when I was talking to Pastor Kitty's husband, Lee, he's the guy who responsible for our, our China connection to get more mass here. And Lee asked me, Lee, Lee actually suggested, he said, hey, Pastor Ben, let's get uh, 20,000 more KN95 masks this time. And I'm the one who's ar arranging uh, with other churches and organization to be part of this. So they each adopt a certain amount. And one of the company 
originally ado adopted 4,000 to 8,000 masks. So I was counting on them. So I told Lee, sure, let's get 20,000 since I was counting on this company to, to adopt at least 4,000. That was, this would pass Wednesday afternoon, right after I posted Facebook about the fundraiser, that company called me, said the fund, their fundraiser didn't go so well. So the 4,000 to 8,000 masks that they're supposed to adopt it, they are going to adopt zero now. They, they're going to back out. I was actually super deflated. I was worried too. So I was like, okay. So I messaged Lee. I said, you know, then maybe that's not do 20,000. We, we don't want to go bankrupt because we, we have to, you know, whatever we cannot fundraise, we need to pick it up ourselves. So I was like, no, let's not do that. Just as when I was, me just as when I was messaging Lee, I said, let's not do 20,000 anymore. I got a phone call. This person out of nowhere called me and said, Pastor Ben, this is something meaningful that you're doing. I'm willing to donate 5,000 US dollars to this cause. I don't need receipt. I don't, you need, I don't need you to do anything. I don't need you to show me where you're donating. I've, I trust you. I'm sending you the money right now. And boom, there's 5,000 US dollars through PayPal we got. So I called, I called Lee, I said, hey, you know, that's two twenty twenty thousand 20,000 masks. Actually, you know, after I, I hung up the phone, I, I actually started to cry because I, I'm under so much pressure lately. I don't know if I can fundraise enough. I don't know, I, I don't know the, if these masks will, will get here safely. What, what if they cannot come? What if they're stuck in customs? I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm doing this. Sometimes I, you know, while everyone has more time on hand, I, I, I sacrifice so much time and energy. I'm, I, I don't even have time to sleep, time to, to, to spend with my wife, spend with my family. I'm constantly on the phone dealing with arranging stuff. And I don't know if the protective gowns can, can come here to, from Taiwan. I don't know which hospitals need it the most. What if I donate to some hospital, they just put in the back storage and, and next door some other hospital needed a lot and we didn't give. You know, what if I drive to the hospital and risking me and my family? And, and I, I'm under so much stress, but you know, through this $5,000, God gave me, not gave me, but give to the cause just like that. And as if God said, my child, don't worry, I got it covered. And that experience actually recharged me. Actually, I got recharged. As, the, as Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish God's work. That day when I was doing God's work, I feel I'm, I was recharged. I feel energized. I feel because I was doing his work, I feel his presence. I feel like he was next to me in my room. And that gave me motivation. That gave me energy. And I believe that's what God wants us to live by. So, as, so in closing, in this pandemic, we're reminded to walk that extra mile to help others. We're reminded that God is not confined by any space or location. And we're also reminded that extra food. It's not about, fridge in your, it's not about food in your fridge. It's not just about the spiritual food. God challenges us and reminds us to the next level in this pandemic, what energizes you? What gives you strength? It's by doing his work. In this pandemic, we're reminded, we're challenged. We can still do God's work. We can still live for him. Let's pray. Father, I want to pray for my brother and sister as we're reminded to, to walk the extra mile to help others. So God reminds us that it's not just about space. God is not limited or confined by any space. And God also challenges us about food and water. What's our food and water? In this pandemic, we're reminded that we need to be connected with Jesus, but not, not just that. We need to do God's work because that's supposed to be our food. That's supposed to be what drives us. So God, I pray that you help my brother and sister in, in the next few weeks, next week, this week or this month, that we need to do his work, that we need to live for him because that's supposed to be our food. In Jesus', in Jesus and we pray, amen.